Hey, welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast. Here we're live. Here we're not live. We're live, but you're not at uh, here at Hell City. Final day, and honored to have Yushi uh, of Guru Tattoo. I don't know if Aaron Delavadova's episode will be before or after this one, but we just finished talking to Aaron, and he introduced us to Yushi. Actually, last night uh, introduced us to Yushi, and uh, it sounds like you have a pretty interesting story. So I'm really excited to have you to have you on. Um, tell me just real real quickly about uh your just an introduction your background in tattooing maybe how long mm -hmm. you started tattooing in korea and um then actually i got an apprenticeship in japan in japan okay mm -hmm. okay and then yeah i've been tattooing for 16 years one year in japan and then um almost like a 10 years in yeah. korea no maybe 12 years and then yeah start tattooing in la at 2008, I was just uh, stay there for like a, maybe two years and then went back to Korea and then came back here in 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. W uh, tell me a little bit about the apprenticeship process in, in Japan. What was that like? Try, like seeking out an apprenticeship? What was the experience like? Um, actually, yeah, in a traditional Japanese culture, they don't, it's kind of hard to get an apprenticeship for the foreigner like me because I'm a Korean and then at that time I didn't know how to speak any Japanese mm. or not none knowledge about that mm. but then before I mean yeah there was no professional tattoo artist before me when I was in Korea so I'm kind of like a first generation of tattooing huh. in there okay that and was going to be my question mm -hmm. is why you why you chose Japan so there was no real tattooing in Korea um, accident, point. it was just an accident. Yeah. yeah. I was lucky to meet my mentor in Japan because it's a kind of like long story, but, uh, I went to Japan to make some money to get a job or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up meeting my mentor and then, yeah, I got a chance to become his apprentice oh. and then, yeah. You d did you go there with the goal of becoming a tattooer or d just whatever you could do in Japan? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. What, what, I mean, obviously, you already mm -hmm. drew and uh, drew well in order to get the apprenticeship. What, were you going to Japan with a, a focus of becoming a, a professional artist in some sort or just whatever you could do to make a living? Yeah, just I went there because one of my friends that I met in the military – in Korea, we have a mandatory service, so we have to be there at uh, at least two years. Okay. And then I met my friend, and then he asked me to come over to Japan to make money because I didn't have any job after I finished my army service. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I accidentally went there to make money, but then my friend told me, like, no, there's no job for you. Huh. Yeah, I got a huge homesick, so I oh, wanted no. to see you. <laughs> and then I'm so sorry. And then I'm like, <laughs> so he tricked no. you, tricked yeah. you into coming to Japan. <laughs> and yeah. then yeah, I lost the direction. Like, why am I here? But I already spent the money to buy a flight, flight ticket, everything. Yeah. And then yeah, I didn't want to go back to Korea. Yeah, with the bare hand. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, what can I do? Something here in Japan. It's a foreign country. But then I really like into the their culture, everything. Mm -hmm even the movie, music, or anything. But then I realized Japan is really strong for the tattooing. Mm -hmm. So I tried to look for the tattoo shop, and then, yeah, and then I met the guy who knows everything. Uh, but the, uh, I need to say that um, it's really hard to find a tattoo shop over there. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's no open tattoo shop because it's still underground. Right. And then I was in the... Niigata city, which is like six hours away from Tokyo. Mm. So, yeah, in the downtown area, they don't have any tattoo shop. And then I eventually met the guy. He knows everything, like a Yakuza or like a like an underground stuff. And then I asked to him, like, can I get a tattoo here? Yeah. And then the guy was, like, okay, yeah, you got a right guy right now. Okay, I'll take you there. Huh. And then, yeah, accidentally, I went there the next day with some bunch of Yakuza guys. Huh. Yeah, he was the real deal. Really? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> and then, yeah, he brought the Mercedes. And then, <laughs> yeah, he got me there. 
And then finally, <coughs> I went to the tattoo st studio, but then from the outside, when you see that, you know, it's just a normal house. Hmm. You can't say it's a tattoo show or nothing, but then the apprentice opened the door and then the four Yakuza guys went together with me and then I was like pretty shocked yeah. because like it's like a hidden place or like a some place dealing the drug or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then I saw the picture on the wall. It's all about the dragon, tiger, everything. Mm -hmm. But then at that time I was like wanted to have a tattoo that uh, like a tribal style or mm -hmm. something small one mm -hmm. then but then it. yeah it's all like a bodysuit everything it was yeah. huge and then i'm like wow what where is this place yeah it's yeah. so surreal for me yeah yeah i'm sure mm -hmm. huh. and then the other yakuza guys tr um started taking off their shirts and then it's all covered by the bodysuit mm -hmm. and then i'm like wow <laughs> yeah. just wow yeah i was kind of scared but kind of like a yeah it was yeah. fun yeah i mm -hmm. bet so what what made you make the tra so you tattooed there for 12 years in japan no or no, no. Or you tattooed there for one year just and one year for yeah for apprenticeship and then yeah. yeah and then so what brought you to the to the u.s what um, so after I finished my apprenticeship and then I went back to Korea and then I opened up my private studio in the same same way that my mentor did, mm -hmm. like a like a private studio. But then when I st start my business in Korea, the tattooing is illegal in Korea. Uh. So it's totally underground. And then at that time, it was so strict because the the point of view of the people in Korea, they think like tattooing is only for a gangster or the criminals. Mm -hmm. So I was always nervous about the, like getting trouble with the police or even the Korean mafia guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, what, a, what a crazy place. It's, mm -hmm. it's such a foreign concept <laughs> uh, coming, from, coming from a place that the tattooing has never been illegal. Yeah. Uh, so th so that, that led to you moving to, you came straight to California from Korea? Yeah, so after that, I, I tattooed like 10 years in Korea. But then I'm like, I feel like um, all the artists that I saw in U.S. are really like a, they have a high level of skill. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, in other hand, I wanted to learn that skill and then I want to create my own style mm -hmm. like that more artistically. Mm -hmm. And then and also the business wise, you know, we have a TV show here in this country yeah. and the tones of magazine. And then seems like everybody loves tattooing. Mm -hmm. But Korea, you know, it's not that way at all. Yeah. yeah. The people. They're kind of like uh, scared about tattooing or looking down the people who got a tattoo. Yeah. So I'm like, um, are you going to end it up your life here? <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. are you going to challenge to the different culture to move? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, when you when you got here, from, and I'm going by what Aaron was telling me last night, that it was a little bit of a culture shock because of the difference. One of the, I'm sure there are plenty of, uh, plenty of huge differences, but from a clientele standpoint, mm -hmm. In in Japan, when someone came to get tattooed, it was up to your discretion as to w what they would get. The artist kind of chose what they put on the person. Did the does the client not have much of a say in in um, the t tattoos that they're getting? Or it depends on the the tattoo artist. Actually, okay. generally, like a traditional tattoo artist, like my mentor, mm -hmm. um, he almost of hi uh, like a. Almost 90% of his clientele mm -hmm. are Yakuza guys mm -hmm. or related with them. So they're not just the normal people. Right. Yeah. So they come to the mentor's place and then first they ask the opinion from the my mentor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like I want to have a dragon, but then what do you think about that? Yeah. Do you think it's okay to have the dragon? When you see my personality... Do you think it's okay? So yeah. I've heard about a lot of story from the different, like a traditional Japanese tattoo artist that somebody are really strict with that. So I don't want you, yeah, somebody I heard, somebody will say like, 
Yeah, you're not a dragon person. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I want to give you a... I'm sorry. No, you're good. That is a... Uh, in, in so so just by judging by their personality, the person comes in and he says, no, no, not, mm -hmm. no dragon for you. Yeah. Uh -huh. But then I'm like, wow, that's, uh, that's different. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so that was kind of a culture that you were that you were first introduced to and then you mm -hmm. show up in Los Angeles of all places where where everyone feels like they should dictate every bit of the design to you do you feel like you were kind of overwhelmed by people micromanaging their designs or how, what were, I'm putting words in your mouth what was your impression whenever you whenever you started tattooing in Los Angeles hmm yeah I think yeah I've met a lot of American people or European people even when I was in Korea but then at that time I'm like I feel kind of, um that's different approach mm. to get a tattoo because it's more like a personal things for them yeah not like a what is the dragon means is that okay to have that yeah it's not like that no. I want a dragon but then I want to put my daughter's name <laughs> right. or the, <laughs> the son whatever banner yeah and then, yeah, they want me to mix all together. But then I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> that's yeah. a different way. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. are, are you, are, ha, did you just give in to that way? Or do you try to guide people like, ah, you don't want a dragon with a banner. <laughs> or may, maybe you. But then, yeah, I said, I don't like to say just no, you can't. Yeah, or something because I think that's a pretty kind of sounds rude. Yeah, for them, yeah. and then I don't want to hurt their feeling. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I had a hard time to how to say, like uh, politely no, and then drag them to the different direction. Yeah, but then it's still hard. Yeah, yeah, because they already got some idea in their head, and then they try to um work with the artist with that idea and then they try to get what they want so and then if i suggest something different direction then i don't know yeah it's not really successful i think yeah you don't, so you don't mm -hmm. think you found the perfect solution for for how to deal with that clientele just yet yeah it depends on the person if yeah. he is more open-minded then yeah it will work yeah. and then i'm happy to provide like the best work from me mm -hmm. but if he's already decided everything and then he doesn't want my opinion mm -hmm. he just want my design skill or whatever if he likes my line work or color mm -hmm. like that then i probably just say like uh let's take more time yeah to yeah. think about that uh in your your focus tell uh, correct me if i'm wrong but you're trying to focus more on large scale work are you trying to is um, that your goal Yes, yes, yeah. because I've been doing a lot of like a small works when I was in Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, one of the main reason that uh, why I came here. Mm -hmm. I was think to yeah to do the more bigger scale work. But did you? We you mentioned on the way uh, on the walk up here that that you feel like Los Angeles probably was not the best place for that. It's not. Um, it, 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 you've, it, if if people didn't know, you've since moved to San Diego. You're mm -hmm. a guru with uh, with Aaron Della Vadova. Um, and you feel like maybe the the tattoo culture in uh, in San Diego is maybe a little more adept to uh, to uh, more collectors. It's a little slower paced of a place. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that your that what you're trying to do stylistically works better in San Diego than it did in Los Angeles? Yeah, I think so. That's why I work in Guru Tattoo right now because yeah. all most of art is in Guru or other shops in San Diego, yeah, they have all like a big scale portfolio. Yeah. But then in LA, yeah, I can see a lot of like a good artists, they doing a large scale of work, but then also the small tattoo, like a Pinterest tattoo, the that scene mm -hmm. is still huge over there. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of kind of, oh, I don't know, a lot of the kind of light black and gray mm -hmm. script, all that stuff, is it still pretty big in Los Angeles? The kind of like whatever Chicano style, mm -hmm. is that still pretty famous there, do you think? 
Yeah, I think I, that I, that genre is kind of like a main thing over there. Gotcha. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I haven't spent a lot of time there. I didn't know. I, I, it's famous for that type of work, but I didn't know mm-hmm. if that was transition, uh, changing or transitioning or not. Um, so m- moving to Guru, focused on larger scale work. Do you find that your time bouncing around, um, th- you know, going from, from, from Japan to Korea to, to Los Angeles, um, stylistically, what kind of a effect do you think it's had on you has it have you had much of an american tattoo influence in your work is it still pretty traditional japanese based i I flipped through your portfolio just a a little bit and Mm -hmm. just incredible work uh but where are you drawing inspiration mostly is it still more japanese than american um actually i started in the traditional way so i wanted to become a traditional japanese tattoo master yeah yeah but then I realized I'm not a Japanese, and then my clientele is not Japanese, and then it's not in Japan. Yeah. So what's the point? Right. And then every time I show my work to my mentor, he said, oh, it's not Japanese work. Hmm. So I'm like, it was pretty shock for me. Yeah. And then I asked him, like, um, so what do you think? And then he's like, oh, that's a pretty much Korean style. And then I'm like, no, we don't have a style yet. And <laughs> right. then what is Korean style? It was pretty shocked because I pushed myself really, really hard every day Yeah. to become like a Japanese work. But then, so I changed my mind like, okay, you're Korean, so you can't be like a Japanese. You don't have their taste in your work. And then the next move was choosing America mm-hmm. because especially why i choose california is i think the color the artists in california when they use the color it's all crazy like a really bright um orange color like a hot pink everything they're so brave to use all those crazy colors Mm -hmm. so i'm like okay maybe yeah you should go there yeah and then check it out and then i realize like i don't know if it's only just my opinion but then when I compare with the East Coast and then West Coast, it's so much different. Mm. And then a few years ago, I got a guest spot in New York. And then it was a New York Invisible Tattoo. And then all the artists over there, they're using a s- kind of like a muted color mm-hmm. and then everything. And then my work started to look like a kind of cheesy <laughs> So because it was bright, because no, because of the atmosphere of the city, everything, uh, and then yeah. all the artists. So I'm like, wow, the location for the artists uh, is so important. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really interesting, and it, mm-hmm. and it's funny. It's uh, and I guess it's just you you put a group of people around each other and they start to influence each other, and then the next thing you know, mm-hmm. you're like, wow, this city kind of does that, and you would never think that it could explode out that far to where you could like put a label on a city and say mm-hmm. well here this is kind of what you see but yeah. you're but you're right that is that is what's happening do you travel much now or are you trying to just build your clientele at guru um uh yeah i'm trying to just stay in san diego right now and why then, would you leave it's like the best city in the world yeah, yeah. you where do you vacate if you live in san diego where do you go on vacation there's no place that <laughs> just, <laughs> san diego. just san diego yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're trying to focus on on the state, and you feel like the clientele is picking up there a, a, ye- mm-hmm. a year. Have you been there a year? How long? No, no. it's all, only been se- eight months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But uh, then I'm pretty busy right now, so I'm really happy with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you come to like for, we're here at Hell City, for instance. So you're you're doing how many conventions or, sh- or shows per year? Are you I try to do more and more probably next year at least I want to do like a at least five or six convention yeah but then I just want to focus on the the US not in Europe or yeah yeah, not in Asia because it's kind of too far and then hard to make a schedule for me yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Um, what uh, what is your impression of of American uh, tattoo conventions like a a show like this for example it has you know burlesque dancers and you know Mm -hmm. we have sword swallower on the signs and it looks it's almost like a circus it's Mm -hmm. themed as a circus kind of sideshow Mm -hmm. is that um it's obviously not something that you saw in 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 japan or korea or is it is that is it a the tattoo culture um 
it's almost more cartoony or not maybe not as respectful here does that is is that my no 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 i think um but anyway i think getting a tattoo and everything is like all based on the hobby i think on the hobby yeah okay yeah yeah getting tattoo yeah yeah because it's not for the yakuza stuff or like for only for the criminals so i really enjoy that yeah okay even this health city show i think this is all the atmosphere, I love it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Huh. Um, yeah, that's a good point. You know, we tend to, being tattooers, we tend to f- um, feel like it's all about us. You know, mm-hmm. we're looking at other tattooers. We're we're focused on our work, and it's easy to forget. Well, this is really about the people that are collecting the mm-hmm. the tattoos. And you're right; it's more. It's not a serious uh, a business here. I guess it's not for yakuza. It's for it is a it is a hobby. It is people are here just to have a good time and see what mm-hmm. you know. They're bringing their kids, and they're you know watching bands, and they're watching people draw on stage. And it is more of a entertainment act. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then, yeah, even. The word hobby that I use, yeah, it doesn't have any, like, a negative side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think if you're really serious about tattoo, I think that's for the artists and then collectors. But the the wide range, all the people, they're kind of enjoy that, not scared about that. Yeah. Yeah, so I kind of like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Um, other mediums do you work are you mainly drawing specifically for tattoos uh do you paint do you do you get outside and do any whatever paint you have the, you have the ocean right there do you do mm-hmm. any plain air painting or anything like that or is is it you're pretty strict uh tattoo tattooing and drawing for tattooing yeah only for tattooing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh do you feel like it's experimenting in other mediums is something you'd like to do there are a lot of great artists a lot of good painters in san diego a lot of uh uh or uh, just in southern mm-hmm. california in general do you do you have any interest in expanding what you're doing or do you feel like in order to be as good as you need want to be in tattooing you have to focus your attention there um until this year i just want to focus on building my own style more more deeper style mm-hmm. so but then yeah in other hand i thought like i want to do some collaboration with uh, some other artist mm-hmm. Not with the tattoo artist, yeah, other oh, okay. painters or sculpture or even the ceramic artist, mm-hmm. yeah, I've been thinking about that, but yeah, I just want to focus on you know on to building my building my your style, yeah, my style more where where do you see your style going uh, right now you've you, so you've said that you wanted to be a Japanese master and mm-hmm. then your and then your mentor told you that you're not a Japanese tattooer, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and then, you know, you come to California, people are really experimenting with color. You go to New York and people are experimenting with very muted palettes. Mm-hmm. Um, do, do you see, do you have a direction? Do you see what the result is, what you're going for? Or is it just a meandering kind of uh, experiment and see where it takes you? Um, the most inspiration thing from the Japanese tattooing for, for me is... All the design, everything, all their culture, everything, Mm -hmm. they have some kind of like aggressiveness Mm -hmm. in their art form. Mm -hmm. It's not about uh, what kind of color they use, what kind of line work they do. It's not about that. It's more like the aggressiveness. So when they Mm -hmm. show off the tattoo, people don't say like, oh, that's beautiful. No, they can't say it. Mm -hmm. It's more like a what the fuck <laughs> like yeah. that it's yeah. pretty like shocking yeah yeah so and then i love that that's why i love tattooing hmm. so i want to take that aggressiveness pull it out and then i want to put that into my style so whatever i can make people say wow then yeah yeah i think i ch- i achieve my goal yeah from that so visually what is it that that makes that that pulls that aggressiveness through is it is it the uh large shapes bold um color is it the mm-hmm. subject matter is it w- w- or just a combination of those things it's more like a like a the the energy of artists and then like more like a seriousness inside mm. instead of just smiling like yeah, la, la. yeah. not like that yeah it's more serious and then 
I don't know, still still try to make the the work like that in that way. Mm-hmm. And but then, you know, I'm in California, so I like to use the bright color and then the positive image because I mean the aggressiveness, it doesn't uh it doesn't mean like uh it's a dark or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you see the the horror movie it's kind of like a creepy and scary. Mm-hmm. But when you see the gangster movie it's different. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that aggressiveness from that the gangster or mafia movie or yakuza movie mm-hmm. is a different atmosphere. I want to put that am- atmosphere to my work. Yeah. Yeah, that's my goal. Yeah, that's an interesting mm-hmm. way to to look at it. And then uh and so from the American side what you've pulled more than anything is is more experimentation with with col- from a color standpoint more mm-hmm. than from a subject matter standpoint or from mm-hmm. your drawing approach. Was yeah. that right? And then all the different style like even some style that I don't really appreciate or something like a little bit cartoony, like a little bit light, you know. Mm-hmm. But then when I see that, I always admire like a uh, wow, how do they do this? Yeah, so yeah. and then I want to see that the good point from their work and then try to learn that yeah. to use into my my style. So yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's really nice for the tattoo culture here in yeah, this country. Uh, yeah, there's so mm-hmm. so many and uh, and I'm with you on that. You I'll see something that isn't anything like what I do or even what I want to do, but there'll be some little nugget, something that you can say like, "Oh, I really like that effect. What mm-hmm. can I how how can I use that? What what, what can I uh, how yeah. how can I translate that in, into what I'm doing and in, in, in America? Well, you know, it seems to me that you know I, uh, with Instagram getting bigger and bigger, I didn't know that, you know, uh, Russians were as good as they were. I didn't know that um, that Australians were as good as they are. So there are a lot of cultures that are doing mm-hmm. some really really interesting things. But there are there's definitely a big melting pot of styles here in, in America, and it's it's really cool to to see. And it's mm-hmm. been interesting to watch it evolve over twenty plus years of tattooing as well um well man i really appreciate you taking the time we're gonna um, let's make sure that we've dropped some of his um work in throughout this episode because uh, i i just looked through your portfolio a little bit this morning but mm-hmm. kind of preparing for the talk and it's absolutely beautiful i know you're gonna kill it and thank you in san diego uh, and i'm excited <laughs> to see excited to see what you do i was just telling aaron i really would love to come out sometime and just see the shop uh any excuse to come to san diego for one thing i just love the city but uh but i'd love to see what you guys are doing out there so man thanks so much for taking the time thank uh, you tell me if people want to book real quickly um what the best way to book with you uh just is? send me the email through the shop or to my personal email at my uh from my website then i'll report reply as soon as possible okay and we'll put mm-hmm. all that in the show notes and uh, are you booking you're taking new appointments now you're booking pretty regularly um or i'm booked until like uh maybe it's three months right now okay yeah okay so it's not that long yeah I no think. not bad at all mm-hmm. i bet it will get longer so if you guys get in early before you before you can't get in at all so thank you thanks yushi uh thank you guys for um uh, for the support and go to tattooimprovement.com and uh keep up with what we're doing where we're going. Uh, We'll see you next time.